All right. We are back with another episode of Raquel and Kelly Sports Talk, and this week is a big week. This week we're talking football. And I still remember watching my son's first game in elementary school and thinking I have no idea what is happening on the field. So I've learned a little bit, but not a lot. So we're going to rely on these coaches to teach us, as we do, because our show <laughs> really should be called Raquel and Kelly Know Nothing About Sports. New name. We are joined this week with Coach Bazwa from White Pines and Coach DeSando from Superior Heights. And we are going to let them teach us, tell us a little bit about your history with the sport and where you are now. I don't remember who's going first. so I don't think we've all told anybody. <laughs> Who would like to step up? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll step up. Sure. Awesome. Read off your sheet here. Uh, so I started coaching when I was 14. I took a bit of an odd path, a really early path, compared to uh, some of the other athletes in the city. Uh, at that age, most guys were playing Sabercats. Um, I didn't want to necessarily dedicate my entire summer to that time, so I started coaching back in Sioux Minor, which was kind of a – an odd situation because I was only in grade nine coaching grade eights. So a lot of these people I would end up playing against in high school in the coming years. Uh, after a number of years in Sioux Minor, I got picked up for Cora's coaching staff as an assistant coach and then immediately kind of thrown into the fire the next year as a coordinator. I spent five or six years at Cora. And then when I got hired by ADSB for the White Pines teaching position, I naturally kind of assumed uh, duties at the school for that. And how long have you been coaching at White Pines for? This is my second year at White Pines now. Okay. And the White Pines program, I know, took a little bit of a hit in size um, in football, but it seems to be growing again. Yeah, no, things are on the upswing. I mean, in comparable nature, the other three schools in the city have over 1,000 students, and we have barely 600, I think. Oh, wow. Um, so a lot of people misunderstand the – legitimate size different in the overall mm -hmm. school populations yeah so it's nice to see a junior and a senior absolutely football yeah. team back yeah. for sure all right mr desando uh so hi my name is matt most of my experience is uh spent playing like i played sue minor all the way through uh i played in high school i was you know fortunate enough to to have some experiences uh there and, and have some success which was great um I moved on to the University of Windsor. I played two years there before the pandemic hit and kind of shut everything down. And, and I came home, uh, finished my degree, and, and then I got hired at Spear Heights. And, and uh, same kind of thing. I didn't assume the, the duties right away of the head coach, but uh, I coached as the defensive line coach for a year. Uh, and then I became the head coach. So, so. All right. So both of you – so you have one full season – Two. At Superior Heights? Two. two. Under your belt. And Baz, you're also two for White Pines? Yeah, second year at White Pines. Second year at White Pines? Okay. All right. So you guys are in a difficult position here because you have to teach us about football. <laughs> so. Best of luck. Yeah. It's a sport that I know there's a lot of strategy in football, but I don't know what it is. And I know there's a lot going on, and it's also a lot of people to manage as well. It's a very big sport. Um I know the basics. Kelly and I know the basics. We're at the games. We're cheering. Um, you'll often hear us saying things like, what happened? Why is there a flag? Where's the ball? All the flags. Yeah. Is my kid on the field? Because <laughs> we, we can't even see sometimes. So anyway, I don't know which one of you wants to start, but we can keep this basic and start teaching us about football. I guess like right from the ground root. Yep. Um, it all starts with a kickoff. So okay. The kickoff is special teams, so kickoff, kick return, punting, punting return, uh, field goal, uh, point after attempt, those are all considered special teams. So it always starts with a kickoff or a kick return for each team. Um, and then, so with the coin toss, you get to choose either if you want to kick or receive, or you can also choose an end, right? Uh, depending on if weather's a factor or something like that. Um, and then if so, if you receive and you maintain possession, then your offense goes out uh, and then vice versa. So if you're kicking, it's your defense coming up. And, um, and then the offense has four downs, so four tries to get 10 yards. And if they achieve that 10 yards, it's a first down. Or sorry, three. Three to <laughs> achieve that, and then it's a first down. Yeah. And so a down means what? So a down is like an attempt to run a play. So uh, like you have time on the clock to run a play. Uh, so you get three of those to try and get your first down. Uh, and then if you are successful, the, the downs like renewed, right? So you're back to first down. That if that 
so I just give it a try to the Okay. Yeah. So you keep getting a try to move 10 yards. Yeah. Is considered, you can go past 10 yards, of course, of course but that's yeah. your minimum, yeah. right? But sometimes people go backwards, not intentionally, but like they grab the ball and whatever. So does it go, it doesn't go negatively. You just move back, right? So then you're, it's getting harder and harder to make your first 10 yards when that yeah. happens, right? Yeah, exactly. Like if it's first and 10 and you lose five, it, it becomes second and 15. You're saying numbers, so, and I know there are words so in yeah, English means, that I uh, should understand, like but I don't. You, you essentially have your second try to get the 15 yards. Okay. The 10 and then the 5 that you right, lost. Right, and the right? 5 that you lost, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, Baz, what do you want to add to this? Uh, pretty much the whole game in a nutshell right there. But, um, yeah, the thing with the negative situations is we have what's called um, a, a forward contact, which means if the running back goes forward and gets, let's say, two yards, mm -hmm. and then he gets hit, but he kind of doesn't leave his feet and he gets driven back, they're going to give him – their forward point of contact so he doesn't lose yards on that he loses where the play stops where he got stopped hmm. but had he tried to let's say avoid a tackle and start like the little kids doing like run backwards across right. the other side <laughs> of the field yeah um where he gets tackled they'll probably lose the yards on that because he wasn't stopped he made the choice to kind of slam her in reverse and get out of the situation okay okay it depends if it's intentional Mm -hmm. But the so goal is to I always move forwards. Yeah. The goal is to right. try and get your 10 yards or plus yeah. within four tries. Yeah. Three. 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 Okay. So if you move your 10 yards or plus within three tries, then you get another three tries to move another 10 yards. Yeah. Minimum, yeah. Right? And it, and it just keeps moving along. I yeah. mean, the goal is a touchdown. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So that's how the, the downs work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell us about the roles of the two lines because I know that's a big deal in football. You have your, your defensive line and your offensive line, mm -hmm. and they have very different jobs, and they often have very different coaching and coaches, right? Um, so can someone tell us about these two different lines and what their roles are and how, how they work? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the offensive line, they're, I have two primary jobs. Number one priority is always protecting the quarterback. It's like having your king on a chessboard in a sense. Okay. There, that's priority number one for them from day one. The second priority is moving the defenders kind of out of the road for those athletes that are carrying the ball per se, like the running backs or the wide receivers. Whereas the defensive line, their first job is to contain the play. They want to kind of keep it in a box so that the play doesn't get out further where there's less defenders or that the quarterback doesn't have an hour to sit back there and figure out where he'd like to throw the ball that day. But in Canadian football, which is different than the NFL, uh, we have a one-yard rule. So all the defenders must be a yard off of the ball, off of the line of scrimmage. Whereas in the NFL, they can be almost nose-to-nose -nose as long as they're not on the other side of that line of scrimmage. Okay, so the line of scrimmage is where the two sides line up yep. and face each other, yep. right? Okay, so when you have the ball on the ground that is going to go to the quarterback, it, does it sit right on the line of scrimmage then? Yeah. The, ball, then the ball is representation the ball of is, the line of scrimmage. Okay, so then everybody on both teams has to be one meter back from that ball? Just the defenders. Oh, just the defenders. Okay. Okay. Is this coming together, Kelly? Uh, well. <laughs> well, you know, maybe a little bit. Maybe, maybe a little not. Bit. Football's complicated. Yeah. I feel and like there's a lot of people and a lot and a lot of, of roles, roles and a lot of names and positions and like how many coaches are out there that depends kind of uh what you have available to you uh you know at white pines i think there's about five of us on the coaching staff i'm not sure yeah, we have about eight nine wow. so uh it's definitely something where it's kind of position dominated where uh, you kind of would like to have a coach for every position grouping right uh, mm. That's kind of the way you would like to approach your coaching staff. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not always possible, and somebody does double duty and stuff like that. Uh, and I have guys on my staff that, that do double duty, and so do I. And so, yeah, it, it's pretty intense, like, like yeah. for the number of people involved, because you think of your team has 30 to 40, maybe more, right? Okay. That's Should we lot. ask some questions about positions? Because positions are a big deal in football. Um, so we've got a quarterback. That I know. 
What is the role of the quarterback? So the quarterback um, has what's called a cadence, uh, and a cadence is what he's saying before the snap so that the ball gets hunted back to him. Uh, so he receives the ball mm -hmm. from the center on the line of scrimmage, on mm -hmm. the offensive line, uh, and then it's up to him to kind of facilitate the play. So if it's a running play, then you know he might hand it off to somebody else. If it's a throwing play, he's going to look to where to throw it kind of thing, right? Um, and that that's his role. I mean, like, he's basically the communicator. Um, so oftentimes, uh, many coaches will be yelling at their quarterbacks, like, for plays. Uh, and then when he goes into the huddle, he communicates that with everybody else, usually. Okay. Yeah. So quarterback, when you're on the offensive, is kind of like your major key yeah. player, right? Yeah. Is there an equivalent on the defense? I don't know the positions on the yeah. on the defensive line as well. Well, huh. I don't know any of them very well at all. But yeah, on the defensive line, would there be like somebody that would be an equivalent that would be making the call? Like this is what yeah. we're gonna do. Uh, traditionally, that's been the role of the middle linebacker on the defense. He is kind of uh, the mirror image of the quarterback, but for the defense. Right. Okay. He's the one kind of um, facilitating the calls from the defensive staff to uh -huh. try and point out like. You're covering that guy. Oh, we think it's a run, stuff like that. Okay, so the middle linebacker. Traditionally, yeah, it could be your safety, your defensive end, but just traditionally, it's been the linebacker. Okay, all right, Kelly. I've been asking all the questions because I'm probably the most confused here. <laughs> but I just want to um, focus back to the high school version of football, and I know that you know tons of students, tons of athletes come to these tryouts. But it's often heard that there's a place for everybody on a football team. So can you explain that a little bit? Like yeah, and I mean, I can speak to personal experience. Um, I'm not exactly an imposing figure at uh, five foot seven, and I was even shorter in high school. But uh, <laughs> I had Rob Greb once described me as a small linebacker with a big heart. And uh, there's always a position for an athlete or student to come out and participate in the game of football itself. It's, uh, it is a little bit up to the coaches to find that sense of responsibility within themselves to guide that athlete to where they're going to be and create an opportunity for them to succeed. Okay. Um, White Pines doesn't have as big of a team as the other schools do because you just don't have as big of a school, right? Superior Heights has a big team. St. Mary's has a big team. Cora has an even bigger team, I think. Um, when you start getting the level like 45 students, 50 students, like, is it, um, is it hard to find a role for everybody? Or is football really so big and encompassing that even with those numbers, it's not? I'd say it's, it's kind of such a big sport that, that you have to. Like, you know, actually at Superior Heights, we're, we're, we don't have as big as a team as people think we do. And, and oftentimes we've, we've recently uh, struggled with numbers. And, and so finding that role like everybody has a role and whether it's playing on special teams or like kicking the ball or like kick return mm -hmm. if you if you give somebody a role and an identity and and then you always need to, to have the spare players that come in and give guys a break yeah. uh, then you also have to have the what if injuries so right there is a spot for everybody right it's just about what's your role is your role a primary role or is it a kind of a, a secondary role of supporting cast yeah. right how many athletes do you think, number-wise, that you you have coming out that stick around? Mm, like this past season or yeah. upcoming? Uh, this past season, we were down to 25, oh like w at the end of the season. Yeah. yeah, just unfortunate injuries and stuff too. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it looks like there's a lot more of you out there than that. But yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. How many kids play high school football across the whole city then? Mm, I'd say. The number would be teetering just into the 200 with um, the bulk of the size coming from a team like Cora. Right, because their junior and their senior teams are both pretty big. Yes. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So almost yeah. 200 kids playing high school football. Yeah, I'd say that's a... Yeah. That's yeah. pretty awesome. So we've heard in other sports, um, like hockey a little bit, um, and different sports where there's different club versions of the sport where kids aren't starting in grade nine first time on the field. I know my son did first time on the field in grade nine, but do you find that kids are coming in that have some experience with football? 
it's great when they do. Um, yeah. Like we, of course, continue to push like the Sioux minor level as a base foundation so that you're not coming in uh, completely new to the game. So it's, yeah. if you have experience, it's great. It's great. It'll help you uh, for sure. But I know personally, like I have no problem teaching the game to anybody. So Perfect. we'll find a spot for you, yeah. you know, and, mm -hmm. and it might take some time. Like I can't guarantee you that you're going to play week one, but right. by week seven, you, you're going to know yeah. what your role is. You know? mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, the misconception for some parents in the city, unfortunately, is that when their kid joins a sport like football, they're not on the field. They think it's um, picking favorites in a sense. A lot of it has to do with the safety factor for these kids. Like hockey, I think like the worst thing is like you miss the puck or you misunderstand where it's supposed to be. In football, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, mm -hmm. you can get hurt. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of it has to do with safety. If a kid doesn't have a strong understanding of the game, we, we as coaches don't want to put them in a position where they're going to get hurt. That's a really good point. And that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah, like yeah. we have the obligation to player safety, right? Of course. And, mm -hmm. and like yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put my own son in risk, so I wouldn't leave anybody else to either. Right. Like, right. Not, yeah. You know, until you understand the the game and understand where you're at, and, and that comes with practice and stuff. Right. Then, yeah, it's not a fast game to learn either, in terms of all mm -hmm. the strategy and where you're playing mm -hmm. and, and watching all of the people on the field. Yeah. Like it's, I imagine it takes a while if you've never played before. Yeah. 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 It's taken me years of watching yeah. my son, and I still don't know what I'm doing. So here we are. Um, I want to ask, what attribute makes a good football player? Physically, mentally? And I understand that maybe somebody who's great on defense might have some different attributes than somebody who's great on offense. But in general, what, what would you say makes a great football player? I like the willingness to learn. Okay. There's going to be opportunities where you get to learn about something that excites you, and then there's going to be times where you're going to be required to learn about something that maybe isn't as flashy. Um, that aspect of the game does tend to get lost sometimes with the younger kids, that you have so much learning to do and that it's not just step on the field, get a football, put your name in the Sioux Star. <laughs> um, so I think that's a big thing for me personally. Okay. Yeah, I – I echo that, right? Like, uh, personally, I was a, a lineman, defensive and offensive on both sides of the ball, and the recognition is slim, right? It's it's the guys scoring the touchdowns to get their name in the paper. Of and course, the yeah. And, and that's that's normal. It's always been that way. But um, I think the, the team aspect of it, you know, they have to be a willing contributor to, uh, you know, to, to acknowledge a team game. And, and I tell the guys all the time, guys, if we're running or throwing for a lot of yards, that's because we're doing other things right. It's not necessarily, I mean, it is those athletes making plays, um, but that's a combination of doing other things right as well, which it's some guys that aren't getting recognized. Mm -hmm. okay. It very much is a team sport. Very, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, of all the sports, it is it is very much a team sport. Yeah. yeah. You're not gonna have one person that's gonna change yeah. I think everything. Yeah. I, I, I preach it to my guys, but every single player has to be doing the right thing for our you know our stuff to work effectively right and if not it kind of gets lost like i literally one guy can you know make a play or or kind of yeah. blow up a play kind of thing you know mm -hmm. want to do some fun questions sure yeah <laughs> so i want to know how you name a play sometimes if it comes from a specific system you want it to make sense so that it's not um, foreign to the kids, but it's kind of distinguishable. Okay. Uh, other times, if it's a trick player, or something fun, we usually let the kids have a little bit of input on it. Okay. As long as they keep it appropriate, I don't have to <laughs> kibosh that idea. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And what? So when the quarterbacks are yelling out, no, I don't know if it's quarterback. Whoever is going to snap the ball is yelling out all these things. Is that made up, or is it? So that's the uh, the cadence Matt alluded to earlier when the quarterbacks usually um, it's lowest form is down set hut. Um, a lot of times if you've heard uh, cadence that has a color in it like yeah. green 16, green 16, both of those things usually mean something. Okay. Um, green could mean the play's going to the right and it's just a reminder to the offensive line okay. that that's where we're going. And if they know that 16 is always a run play, then they know, okay, so we're going to run the ball to the right just in okay. case anybody missed anything in the huddle. Mm -hmm. And I know it's important because I remember my son in August had his playbook, 
and he worked very diligently to memorize the plays, right? And so this is something that generally you do at the beginning of the, the season. You've got your playbook with the plays. Everybody's got to sort of learn them so that you're all on the same page. Is that yeah. kind of typically what happens? Yeah, and then like for myself, I you know I continue to add as the season goes. Oh, okay, on. right. Because so you gotta make changes. It's a living document, can, right? Got like it. That's yes. what I tell yeah. those guys is yeah. that's the playbook we start with is not going to be the one we end with, right? right. And mm -hmm. we're going to continue to tweak it and, and mm -hmm. make it work for us. Mm -hmm. But everyone has to do that work in the beginning, right? To yeah. get on the same page, yeah, right. The terminology is the same uh, at the start and at the end of the season, so you have to know what that terminology means to to be in the right place mm -hmm. and make a good play, right? Okay, so one of my favorite things is, well, first of all, there's flags and there's penalties and whatever. I absolutely think it's hilarious to hear the penalty was declined because I envision somebody just going, uh, no, thank you. I don't want that penalty. And I know that's not really what happens. What does it mean to decline a penalty? And why do you even get to choose to decline a penalty? So it becomes situational. Um, you may have made a really big gain, like you threw a 20-yard pass. Okay. And the uh, defense gets hit with a 10-yard holding penalty. You could take the penalty and get 10 yards. Or you can decline the penalty and keep the result of the play. So you'd keep that 20-yard pass instead. So certain penalties you're able to decline. Other penalties, it's non-negotiable. Do you just get so many that you get like two? It, no, it depends on what the infraction is. I still don't really understand. Like, if to me, I guess because a, a penalty is a penalty, a rule is broken, something happened. You don't get the option to decline it. Like, I, I'm still not really understanding well, how this works. If you put it this way, like if the, so, like Will alluded to, like if the offense makes a gain, but the defense committed the infraction, why is it the offense's fault, kind of thing? So. If the offense makes a big gain, the defense commits the infraction, but they still made that gain, they shouldn't be penalized for oh, okay. making Okay, because you're declining player. it because the other side yeah. did yeah. it. Yeah. You're not declining your own penalty. No, correct. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish. Because you know what I was thinking. I'm thinking, yeah. yeah, we totally messed up, guys, but we're just going to say no thank you. No, no, no. no. It's oh. always the Steve Edwards doesn't want us to do that for some reason. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? No, thanks. Oh, we don't want it. No, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I get it now. This is yeah. why we do this show. Yeah. Because yeah. this is, I have wondered this for years. Now it makes sense. Because, thanks. like, the offense puts in a lot of, like, say if it's the offense making the game, like, you put in a lot of time to make that work. Right. And then all of a sudden it's, moved, like, removed because of something the defense did. That's right. It's not your fault. And so, so you'll say, no, we're not going to yeah. give them the penalty. That's why we'll decline it. And, and we'll take our result. And we'll take our result. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like a light bulb. <laughs> like a light bulb went yeah. off here. We all saw it. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm, like, done now. We could just yeah. stop the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> so we just have some uh, terminology things you said earlier, punt, that there's special teams. What is a sack? Uh, a sack is any time the quarterback is brought down to the ground when he's attempting to make a passing play. So before he has... Yeah, okay. before he's throwing the ball. I just made a and throw. It, it has yes. to be behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So okay, if okay he's so he's tackled. Behind the line. Behind the line of scrimmage, scrimmage and didn't let the ball go. Yeah. And that's called a sack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are sticks? Explain the sticks. Like, so... We call them the sticks that you pay little kids five dollars yeah. to move. What what are what are those? Thi are they even called sticks? Yeah, yeah, yeah they I've are. Okay. I worked the sticks for a long time when I was a kid. Uh, so the sticks just help. The, like I mean, it helps everybody: the coaches, the referees, the fans, the players to know where your first down line is. Okay. So the there's one stick that marks the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. and then they're on a, ch a ten yard chain. Right. Um, and then so the other stick marks your first down line. So it marks where you have to get to. Oh, okay. And then there's one stick with numbers, which marks the down. So that stick might be anywhere in between or outside of that if you lose yardage and stuff. Okay. But it, it kind of marks where you need to get to, and it gives you, like, a visual representation, yeah. right? So. Okay, so the one end is always on the line of scrimmage, yeah. and yeah. the other one is showing where the 10 – where okay. you need to get to. Where you need to get to to get the 10. Yeah. All right. Because I look at that and I'm like, those little kids making $5 seem to know what they're doing. And I don't. Well, I feel like the refs are always moving. Are always <laughs> moving and telling them. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my Where goodness. Are we at here? I don't even know. 
So what defines a successful season in the high school league? Uh, completing one for the sake of white pines, I think. But um, <laughs> No, but um, a successful season is you've got as close as you can to the same group of young athletes as you did at the start of the season. They're there with you through a win, through a loss, but they're there for the right reasons. They're there to enjoy the game. They've become better athletes, and hopefully along the way they've picked up enough skills where they've become better people as well. Nice. I like that. Yeah, it's the same deal for us. Like, I, I often reflect after the season, like, did are we are we better than when we started? And and I don't mean better necessarily physically on the field. I mean like, are we are, is our attitude better? Are we better people? Um, are are our academics better? Um, like, are we better on the field? That mm-hmm. does have a, a, an effect, yeah. right? Um, but better in, in the whole sense and not just the athletic sense of the word. Mm-hmm. Okay, my last question for you guys is, how do you foster sportsmanship in football? It can get a little rough. It can be a little bit, there can be some little tempers, but in general, how do you foster sportsmanship in this sport? Um, I think as coaches, especially now that even as young as me and Matt are at the head coaching position for senior football, um, it leads by example. Um, there's going to be times, like, I'm well known, I'm sure Kelly can attest this, <laughs> when I get loud, you can hear me fairly clear across the field. But it's up to us to kind of carry ourselves in a manner that when the boys or girls see us, that's who they're seeing. That's who they're going to um, – not intimidate, wrong word. <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. Model. Model, emulate. a different word. Yeah, emulate, sorry, that's what I want. Um, emulate on the field. We want them to have that sense of professionalism almost on the field. Yeah, it's like I always say when things go wrong – people look at me when things go right people look at me so it's important to kind of stay in check and and as for the aggressiveness part of the game it is a physical game it Mm -hmm. is aggressive but Mm -hmm. that's got to stay between the lines and so listen when you come off the field you're not this isn't you're not a violent kid but you're you're say violent or aggressive when you're playing the sport that's okay that's part of the game um but kind of like knowing when to turn it off and turn it on, right? Right. So, so that's part of it, too, is managing emotions. And, and for us, too, like, I mean, like, I'm, you know, I'm an emotional guy, and I get involved, too, and it's just kind of finding that equilibrium that, yeah, this is this is a game of football, and, yeah, you can be violent on the field, which, you know, I encourage, but off the field, you're not that person. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, well... I think we are out of time. Always. Always. <laughs> Football is such a complicated sport to me, and there's so much into it that we could have literally chatted for twice as long, four times as long, and I probably still wouldn't <laughs> understand everything, but I'd come a lot farther, and I have come a lot farther today. So thank you, both of you. Many of our coaches have said how challenging it is to explain a game that you know intuitively to somebody who doesn't. So thank you both for no trying to work with uh, to work with us and our knowledge. We appreciate it very much. No problem at all. No problem. We, thank we you. appreciate all of your time that you give our boys. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a long hard season. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot of time. So thank you very much. And um, I guess August. August. Well, August well, is when things start. Well, before. <laughs> oh, before. Yeah. Saber Cat starts in a month, so I'll be there if anyone Sabercat needs me. I, I like <laughs> to say it never stops. So. It never <laughs> stops, yeah. and it doesn't stop. It, it never stops. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you both thanks, very, um, very much for giving us some time today, sharing some knowledge, and thanks for uh, yeah giving so much dedication to the sport of football. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're back with our football episode with our athletes. And we have three young athletes here with us today. We have Liliana Sachin from Cora, Leah Moulet from St. Mary's, and Will Meta from Superior Heights. So we're going to let you guys go. And we didn't volunteer tell anyone who was going first. Liliana, do you want to go first? Sure. All right. Take it away. Uh, I'm Liliana Sachin. I play for the Cora Colts senior team. And I'm in grade 12. I'm a linebacker. What's your history with the sport? Were you brand new in high school? Uh, I s- well, I s- technically played for like a year when I was like nine-ish, but I stopped after that. So I basically started new in grade 10. 
Oh, in grade 10. Oh, because of COVID. Yeah, grade 9 was a COVID year. Grade 9 was a COVID year. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And who wants to go next? Liam? Will? I'll go next. Uh, My name's Will Madaw. I go to Superior Heights. I'm in grade 11. And uh, right now I'm playing linebacker. Um, I've played a few different positions over the years, but right now I'm stuck at line outside linebacker. Okay. And your history with the sport? Um, I started in grade 9. I was kind of tall, lanky, skinny, not fast, to be honest. I wasn't that good. Um, but No, you really weren't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> as I've kept playing and worked out and grown into my body a little bit more and kind of some screws loose up there, I want to hit people now, um, I've gotten better. <laughs> and you play Sabercats as well. Yes, I play Sabercats. I played wide receiver for the JV Sabercats. Last year, it was my first year. I've only played one year of Sabercats so far. It was a great time. Okay, and Liam. My name is Liam Ouellette. Uh I go to St. Mary's College. I play DB. Uh, I've been playing football since I was about eight years old. In grade three, I think, was my first year at SMFL. I've played plenty of positions since then. Like I've started off as a wide receiver, and then uh, – I wasn't very great when I started high school. They switched me over to DB, and uh, I've had a strong suiting ever since there at uh, in my senior level. I actually don't know what DB is. It's the uh, person that covers the uh, receivers or a safety, who's someone that plays deeper, but I play corner specifically, so I just take out the primary receiver on the outside. What does DB stand for? Defensive back. Oh, okay. Okay. You are going to learn that I don't know very much about football. <laughs> All right, so training starts generally in August, right? Yep. And it's it's a long, hard season. No, I guess it's not a long season, but it's a hard season. So what does training look like for football, and how different is it from if you play dif- defense or if you play on offense? And whoever wants to answer this can answer this. I can start. So with training camp, so for the first week or two of football, generally like in a season, um, everybody's doing the same thing. Like as the season goes on, like you'll break off in your position groups and do what's meant for your position. But at the start, like you're just getting back into shape. Like some people aren't mm-hmm. playing football in the mm-hmm. summer. Um, so you're getting back into shape, um, just going over the, like not the little things, but – almost getting back into things and then you'll break off into positions so like the offense and defense will split apart the defense will work on tackling um just hitting people and the offense will like run plays and make sure they're like you know getting things how they need to be okay anyone else what does training look like for us uh we get our pads on the very first day it's a lot of conditioning like will said it's a lot of like push-ups and like sprints and stuff like that like this past year we uh a lot of laps just to <laughs> get into shape um but like yeah it really depends on like your position as well like the more in depth in the you get into the season the more you'll break off into your positions and then you'll just work on your techniques in your position groups so like defensive backs and like linebackers, depending on what kind of coverage team you are or like how you want to play your defense. So like DBs will work on man coverage or they'll play zone coverage, a lot of that kind of stuff. Like you, we'll work on that throughout the season. Liliana, anything to add? Yeah, for us it's basically just the first few weeks like training camp is like laying the groundwork for basic skills and like systems and stuff like that and then as the year goes on it gets more specific and you get settled into your different positions and it starts to work on more specific skills but yeah do you guys have a favorite drill that you do in training in like i don't know as a receiver i was like doing one-on-ones with the dbs so like say i'm a receiver liam's a db I'm going to run a specific route, and he's going to try and stop me from doing so. And it's just a one-on-one. It's fun. But, um, yeah, I'd probably say that's my favorite drill because it's, I don't know, friendly competition. Um, but, yeah, everything competition-based in football I find is, like, more fun because if you're doing a drill where you're just, like, running and more running, <laughs> like, it's just not fun. <laughs> but it needs to be done, of course, but 
Um, yeah, anything competition based, friendly competition, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and so much. Depends. Anyone else? Favorite drill? So, uh, my favorite drill, it's not really like a name for a drill, but uh, we have call outs before every practice. So, if you ever have like beef with anyone or something like that, you can squash it, like doing like an Oklahoma drill. Or, uh, like, we'll have two linemen, two linebackers, or like a linebacker fullback, and then DB, and then a running back. So the running back will try to get to the end zone or whatever, and then there's three people trying to stop him with two blockers. That's one of my favorite drills. You just kind of wake you up, getting ready for practice. You start off every every practice like that. Okay, Liliana, your favorite? Um, probably anything with like live tackling, stuff like that, scrimmage drills, mm -hmm. stuff. That's Under probably it, yeah. Under what Liam said, like I didn't mention Oklahoma drill. That gets the boys like pumped up. You know I don't know we what don't that know means. What this is. Yeah. Just explained it. Um, it's I still don't get it. Okay, so um, you can go on like the five or ten yard line. The offense, you'll have, let's just say one blocker. Okay. So there's a blocker right here, and there's a guy right here with the ball. Okay, so people who are listening can't see what you're doing. Of course, but I'm explaining. Okay, <laughs> so um, there's a blocker and a guy with the ball, and then there's a defender who's taking on the blocker, and then somebody behind the defender trying to get the ball carrier. Okay? Sort of, yeah. So you're kind of in like a condensed space. So you can't just run around them. Okay. You have to hit each other. Okay. Um, so basically whenever we do that, like our whole team will gather around and like just lay some huge hits and it gets everybody pumped up. It's pretty good. Does anybody have a least favorite drill? And yes. is it suicides? No. Do you do suicides in football? Yes. But yeah. Um, this year, I got introduced to a drill by Coach Matt Goche. Um, so there's three blockers, and you're a linebacker in this setting, and you have to pass rush them. So for anybody who doesn't know what pass rushing is, is basically you have to get by your blocker and, in a sense, get to the quarterback. But in this drill, there's three blockers lined up five yards apart, like vertically, and you have to get past every single one of them and then get to the ball. But once you get past the blocker, they go back around and help the other blocker. So it's like never ending. <laughs> and you, then by the end, you have three people blocking you and you're trying to get to the ball and it's so tiring. But for us, we had like five, six linebackers. So it's never ending, like you're not, no breaks. And oh we did that for oh a long wow. period of time. Yeah. And it made me so much better as a pass rusher, but it sucked. <laughs> like it sounds exhausting. It does. Yeah, anyone else have a least favorite? Mine, I wouldn't say, is really a drill, I guess, but it's, like, something we do after, like, our warm-ups. So, like, we'll be doing, like, a bunch of, like, agility or footwork to start the every practice. But then afterwards, we'd uh, do a backwards lap, which it doesn't sound as bad, but especially when you have to be in a low stance, like, you're backpedaling constantly, it starts to, like, kill your quads and that. It's... Like, all the way around the whole field? The whole backwards? track. Not okay. A, not, not a field, the, the track. track. The yeah. outer rim of the track. One it's time? One time, that's it? Oh, no, it like depends. If you don't stay oh. low, you go again. Oh. And you have to run back and then do it again. That sounds painful. And yeah. you're, you work as a team, so if no, someone doesn't do it, the whole <gasps> oh. team has to do it again. Oh. We were pretty bad at it to start, but uh, we got better at it. You got better. Year, yeah. So. Liliana, do you have a least favorite? I'd say any conditioning, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so what did tryouts look like? We know that there's a spot for everybody on the team and that nobody essentially gets cut, but what do tryouts look like? Like, what are you trying to prove in that first week of camp? Um, basically, like for me, I didn't know what position. Whenever I came to Superior Heights Senior Football, I didn't know what position I was going to play. I thought I was going to be a receiver or a backup quarterback. I'm not going to lie. And then I got stuck on defense, so stuck well I like where I am on defense <laughs> of course but I, that's not where I thought I'd be so um, <laughs> basically at the start you're just trying to prove that you're athletic or big or strong everybody has uh, I don't know what a word is but they have something valuable towards the team whether that's their speed strength even like if you're really smart like you can anything helps so you just got to prove what your power is to the football team and Coaches know what they're doing. They'll sort you out where you should go, but as long as you try your hardest and 
do all you can, you'll get put where you need to go. I imagine that's probably pretty similar for... Yeah, it's very similar. Ours yeah. was just straight finding your position as soon as possible and just getting in the, the work and technique and all that. And like how coaches want to find desirable traits about you, like if it's your speed, your strength, your size, or like Will said, like your like how like if you're smart, like if um, you know like you if you're good at strategy, well, like you know the like strategy, that. and like or like even like if you're a big like film watcher, like if you like watching film and like you understand another team's offense, like that's a big thing that like helps a lot of people out, like mm -hmm. not just yourself. Like if, like if you play defense, it helps your entire defense out just knowing um, what they're gonna run or just like what tendencies are with certain stuff. Like noticing stuff like that can help your team a long way, but tryouts is just conditioning since everyone, like, mm -hmm. like you said, like everyone makes a team, but it's just like proving your worth and like where to go, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, like you just try to work hard and like find what you're good at, what you're not, what you need to improve, and like mm -hmm. keep working at it. And that's. And is it challenging at Cora because you do have a very big team? We do have a very big team. Yes. The biggest in the city in terms of the number of people that are on the field yeah. that are given. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I don't <coughs> know. I, we have good like drills and stuff that makes sure everyone's like cycling through pretty quickly. So it's it's pretty good actually. Mm -hmm. I feel like lots of schools run it the same way. Like Sabercats was very different um, compared to high school. So high school, it's at like the end of August or mid-August. You'll like get things started around there. Sabercats, we had a practice or two before we knew our position and we're getting ready for a game. Because everybody who does Sabercats pretty much, it's not like you're finding out different kinks. No, right. like you, mm -hmm. you're there to play a position. Yeah. And mm -hmm. And you have to get into your competitive season really fast with Sabercats, yeah, too, right? No, Where he like has more time in high school. We had a few practices yeah. before our first game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I love asking is, and, and Liliana, we're going to start with you this time, because we've got this rotation going where you're always the last person. So this time you're going to be the first person. All right. What would you say to somebody to convince them to try football? Well, I would just say it's an awesome way to challenge yourself, to try something new in a new environment, and it's just an awesome opportunity for anybody, pretty much. Mm -hmm. What would you guys say? I think, especially in football, it's the only sport that every single person can contribute and have a value to the sport. So, like, if somebody's like, oh, I don't want to play football, like, I'm too small, like, yeah, but you're fast, and you're smart, and you're this, and you're that, like... Everybody has something for football, and it's like, for example, like I'm a call my buddy Seth. He's like, I don't want to. I'd get crushed. I'm like, buddy, like you're athletic and fast, and you have like the craziest hands I've ever seen. Like, just go catch the ball and like come be with the boys. It's like, it's a culture thing. Mm -hmm. Like, football, playing football on a Friday night is different than any other experience I've had mm. like in my life. Like, it's just different. And people who don't get to experience that, like I when they could, like, I just feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Liam, what would you say to convince somebody? I'd pretty much, like, say similar things to Will. Like, I would say, like, everyone can contribute in their own way, whether if you're playing or not. Like, just being there at practice. Like, having more numbers in that, just, like, showing that the sport is growing. Or not even just growing, because it's a big sport. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that is it already. But uh, just more numbers and, like, Everyone can contribute, like, doesn't matter what you do. Like, if you're just on the bench, you're cheering your team on, like, you just, motivation, even that. Water but boys. Yeah. <laughs> Water Maybe boys. Yeah. Do you, uh, so we've asked coaches this before, and I know it's not on your player question, so I'm going to throw it out there anyway. We often say, is there any truth to um, you have to show as much spirit on the bench as you would on the field? I know I said that wrong, but do you guys believe mm -hmm. that? Yeah, that absolutely. There's some value in ha in like rooting people on from the side. Absolutely, definitely. Because yeah. it is a sport where you have half like half the team is off, half the team is on. Yeah. Yeah, like for example, you guys know Jerry, our guy yeah. Jerry, who we went back to Horn Pain. Shout like, out to Jerry. Shout out Jerry. He we was our love biggest Jerry. hype man. That, like since I was in grade nine, like he's been a huge hype man. Like he gets the boys rolling. Yeah. Like. When Jerry yells, like, the boys yell. That's good. Like, yeah. everybody, 
I don't know. It just the bench, the atmosphere on the bench. Like if it's up and rolling, and like we're not doubting anything, then the guys on the field will can, can feel, feel that it. energy. You can, no, you can. There, you can. You can hear feel it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. You can hear it. No, it's just it's a motivation thing. Okay, so question for each of you. If you are likely to be called out by a ref when you are playing football, what is it most likely to be for? Going offside. I get jumpy and want to <laughs> go get the quarterback. <laughs> but they've All right, the so that's what you're going to get. Okay. Liam, what are you going to be called for? Uh, just a common penalty, I guess, that uh, – I can't say that I get called for, but just for, like, my position would be holding or, like, pass interference, which is just when the DB basically makes it nearly impossible for a receiver to catch the ball. With, like, beyond the rules, like, just, like, grabbing, tugging their jersey or, like, twisting their waist or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, – You personally, though? I, I wouldn't say that. I didn't get no. too many penalties this year, I'll be honest. So Okay. All right, Liliana, what's the ref going to call you on? I'd say probably offside, yeah. Yeah? For it's like a linebacker thing. In Just blitzes and stuff. Yeah, you get hungry. Yeah. Like, you want to go. You want to go. Okay, sure. so <laughs> can someone explain to me what offside in football is? So, basically, whenever you're – or I guess you could do it on offense, too. But for me, um, it's whenever you go across the line of scrimmage before the ball snaps. Oh, okay, yeah. So, for example, there's a thing called a hard count. So, they'll say, ready, down, set, hut but they won't actually snap the ball. So then I'll, you'll see, like, number six on Superior Heights flying across the field. <laughs> and, like, it's just – it's not a good look. Everybody looks at you. They're like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, sorry, guys. Okay. Now I get offside. Okay. <laughs> and so, Liliana, you said the same for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting jumpy, right? Yeah. yeah. Jumping the gun. That's a perfect example of jumping the gun. Jumping the gun. Okay. I have a question for Liliana. Is there a difference in how boys and girls play? I wouldn't say there's a difference in how they play. It's more just in the team, like, atmosphere off the field, more like, mm -hmm. and as individuals. Okay. And what was it like for you being a girl on a – were you the only girl on the Cora team? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what was that like for you? Um, it's good. Like, I find they will respect you or whatever if you just put the work in. Mm -hmm. Like, you're on an equal level there pretty much. And you're a defensive player, right? So you yeah. tackle. Yeah. And so you don't often get tackled. Uh, occasionally in occasionally. Drills, but do you not think really. do you think boys are like, oh, that's a girl. I don't know if I should tackle her. Or, or they I like don't it's know like that they care. They don't. <laughs> I was just gonna say they don't care. The game's on, no. and we're just taking this person down. Pretty sure they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> on our uh, junior team last year, I think we had four girls, and it was like, um, so my buddy Andrew, he has a sister Taylor, and. She, like, absolutely decked somebody. I forget who it was, but it was in pits, and she killed somebody. <laughs> and everybody went crazy. It was, it was awesome. Uh-huh. All right. So you don't, you don't think there's a big difference? No. You're, it's the same game. You're on the field. Yeah. Yeah. You're wearing same your equipment. Game. You go for it. Everybody's fair. Pretty much. Okay. Cool. All right, Kelly, you're up with a question. How do you guys manage pre-game jitters? So do you get nervous before games? Do you... And the, alt the second part of that question is, do you have any superstitions that you need to do before a game? Some athletes have said socks. They yeah. have to put one sock on at a time. We've heard honey twice, I think. Honey twice, Smelch. two different sports. Yeah. Um, lots with specific eating things. Eating things, the way they put their cleats on. Yep. Anything for you guys, Liliana? Can you think of anything that you have to do? Or Well, I wouldn't say I'm superstitious, but... I just basically try to go over assignments and stuff like that, make sure I know what I have to do and know my special teams and stuff like that. Um, basically, if I'm nervous, then I'll just, like, try to put trust in the preparation of the team and of myself and basically just build confidence and focus on that. Okay. You guys, superstitions, pregame jitters? Uh, a superstition I have is uh, I have to eat pita pit before every game. See, food. Pita pit. It's yeah. food. It's yep. I, I get the same thing every game. What's your order? Uh, buffalo chicken pita. Mm -hmm. Okay. Extra large, like large with the extra meat every time. It's. <laughs> Did you get nervous before a game, Liam? Like, you get like the normal butterflies in your mm -hmm. stomach for a little bit, but uh, you kind of just go over what you need to do every game and uh, it kind of just goes away. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just personally. Like, it, I'm not the same as other people. Like, some other people, like, need to do certain things to uh, get over fears. Well, like, yeah, fears before a game. But, no, like, another superstition I have, though, is with my cleats. I, uh, so the entire week leading up to practice, I have, like, my cleats that I wear every game where I can fold them to, like, a higher, uh, like, up my ankle. Every game, I'll have it higher up on my ankle, but practice, I always have it low. Mm. I don't know. Oh. I just kind of pick that up randomly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll wear, like, three pairs of socks every game. It's oh. just a way to stay warm. And you get tighter fit in your shoes, too. You like get more control of your feet. Uh, that must have been really hot when we had yeah. like some eighty <laughs> yeah. degree no, that, games that first in game, September. That Holy first game Holy. that was bad. That that was the one game where I didn't wear uh, like big socks. I wore that like was ankle hot. socks. Yeah, that was still hot. had the three socks on though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the collective smell of both yeah. teams <laughs> after. <laughs> Ooh, that could knock you over. That was a hot game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Will. What about you? Superstitions, Super and do you get nervous before a game? Um, Yes, I do. But superstition-wise, like one time before a Sabercats game, I tried like meditating. Like I went on a walk, and so the game was at like one p.m. Uh, I tried going for a walk in the morning, waking up early, stretching, doing all that, like getting all ready, calming my mind, and I had the worst game of my life. <laughs> so, um, like I was dropping balls all. It was bad. So since then, I've not really had superstitions. I just kind of rock out with the boys in the yeah. locker room just like loud music just bang my head on a locker if I'm feeling <laughs> frisky um, Don't do that. but yeah I do get nervous so in grade 10 it was our first game um, I was playing quarterback I'd never played offense before okay and I was at quarterback and I was captain like I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> I was just <laughs> like I felt like I was gonna throw up I was uh -huh. so nervous I didn't know what to do I was like calling my cadence like shaking like I couldn't <laughs> it's it's calmed down since then with more experience under my belt but um yeah like I think I get nervous before games I think it's because I care I agree 100% um, 100% in basketball like obviously I love basketball but I'm not really getting nervous before games I'm going up there to play but in football like it's just different like I can't be letting my team down can't let anybody down it's time to go mm -hmm. so. yep all right, we are at the point of our show where we ask you guys to give shout outs. So what we want you to do, if you are up for it, is give a shout out to somebody who has supported you in your sport. It can be more than one person. So we've often have people like, you know, shout out my family, shout out my coach. It can be one person, whatever you want. Um, so, because nobody gets to, to be a high school athlete all on their own, right? <laughs> all right, so let's give some shout outs. Who wants to start? I'll start. So first, I'd like to give a shout out to Coach Matt Sando, um, turning our program at Spirit Heights around. Um, we were, our senior team was winless for three years, and then he comes in. We had a few wins this year, and we're only getting better. Like, he's turned the culture around. We're just to start. We're turning everything around around here. Um, another guy would be a positional coach, Coach Matt, <laughs> Matt Sando, Matt Goche, <laughs> just a team of Matts. Yeah. Matt Goche. Um, he coached me in junior a little bit. I was kind of offense and defense. I went all over the place. But um, he's always believed in me. He's always, like, took time out of his day, like, after practice to help me if I don't know what I'm doing. Um, just try and make me better, and especially making the switch to linebacker um, as a grade 11 student. Um, he's helped me so much with technique, form, just – becoming a better player um of course give a shout out to my mom mm -hmm. um, you better give a shout out <laughs> to your mother that's right she supported me along the way that's the big sign yep. <laughs> um yeah my family in general but my mom is a very big part of it um <laughs> paying for it because we all know <laughs> i can't do that um being at every single game i don't think you've missed one nope. um getting me to and from practice feeding me dealing with me when i'm hangry and mad and upset whatever I'm going through it just doesn't matter like my mom's always been there so yeah. you got a good one gotta give a, gosh, <laughs> gotta give a show to my mom yeah all right who's next uh, I'll start it off by shouting out my mom because yes. uh, she'll kill That's me right. if I don't she will <laughs> we know her yeah. but uh, yeah she's a big supporter uh, she lets me get pita pit before every game so <laughs> and she pays for it so mm -hmm. I don't have to buy it myself but uh 
I'd just like to shout out a few of my coaches, like uh, Brandon Corelli. He's a big supporter of me. Um, like, I still text that guy constantly in the off season, And, like, during workouts, like, he'll improve my form and stuff like that for weightlifting. And uh, my positional coach, Jordan Hoover, um, that guy is probably my biggest supporter. Like, he constantly says that, like, I, he's my biggest fan and stuff like that. He's a big reason why, like, I uh, did play football this year. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's one of my biggest supporters easily. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask Liam a question? Sure. What changed your mind? Because I know you didn't want to play football originally. Like, I was talking to you in August. You weren't going to play football. What changed your mind? Why Why did you play? Uh, I kind of just wanted to play, I guess. Like, I had <laughs> – I said I didn't want to play, but, like, I love the sport. Like, I've been mm -hmm. playing it since I was eight. Like, I don't know why I even thought about not playing, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and, like, I had people constantly texting me, like, calling me an idiot and stuff like that if I don't play. I, I shouldn't say people call me an idiot, but they, but were, they, calling, they, they were calling yeah, me an idiot if did. I didn't play. <laughs> and, uh, like, it's a constant running joke that uh, throughout this year, anytime I made a big play or anything like that, I would be running to the sideline. It got to the point that coaches were saying that, oh, this kid wasn't even going <laughs> to play this year <laughs> every single time, especially in our NASA semifinal, that game. I got, like, my second pick of the game or whatever, and, like, even Corelli and Hoover were yelling that. They don't normally say stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They were saying stuff like that. And I don't know. I I don't know why I would ever think of not and playing, to be honest. And are you 12? Oh, yeah, I think Of so. course. <laughs> of course. All right, Liliana, your shout-outs. Um, I'll keep it short. Uh, I'll just shout-out my mom, because mm -hmm. why not? Because um, <laughs> she deserves a shout-out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And shout-out to all my teammates and coaches and assistant coaches at Cora. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Five oh, more. <laughs> okay, this is turning into the Will Mada <laughs> show no. here. <laughs> um, I have two shout outs still. Um, shout out Gavin Nye. Player shout out. Yeah. He's a senior linebacker who kind of like, he's the best linebacker on our team, let's face it. And he just helped me and all of our defense players get better every single day. And he's like a quiet, like under the radar kind of guy, but he's a leader. And nice. He helped me get so much better, whether he knows it or not. Mm -hmm. And then my second one, <laughs> like eighth one probably by now, <laughs> Coach Freddy. Coach Freddy gets us so hyped up. He's a manimal. Like, he's a different breed. I'm so <laughs> glad he's on our coaching staff. Like, he just, I don't know. He has different energy that I've never seen from anybody else. And it's awesome. He's cool. a great guy. <laughs> nice. nice. I'm glad you have so many people that are important to <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Shoutouts matter, right? We sometimes we have to take a moment and give credit where credit is due to people. It's making me want to shout out a few of my teammates. <laughs> Here too we now, go. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh uh, my gosh. Okay. So uh, I want to shout out Jack McPherson. He was a big supporter of me too. Like he was a guy that kind of like because like beginning of the year I wasn't really fully in our rotation and stuff like that. DBs because uh, again I wasn't fully sure if I wanted to play football, but this guy was constantly hyping me up, wanted me to keep working if I work I'll get in I'll get in and I eventually paid off like I started playing more and more uh, I started like putting numbers on the board and uh, he was a big supporter uh, as well as Maddie Tucker that guy mm -hmm. was the one of the people that really convinced me to play love Maddie love the guy and then uh, Chrissy Carr got a <laughs> shout got a shout out Chrissy Carr one of the best sport uh, managers anyone could ask for hydration specialist he's a great guy love him uh, just love the guy. Mm -hmm. He does nice. a good job. He takes his job seriously. Oh, yeah. All right. Liliana, did you have anyone else you wanted to I'm, shout out? I'm You're good. good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, this wraps up our athlete session on football. Thanks so much to all three of you for coming and um, sharing, obviously, your big love of the game. Just a little bit. Like, yeah. Obsession. Yeah. Are we into obsession category? We're past that. Past obsession category? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was really very clear for all three of you how much you do really love this sport. Liam, we're glad you did say yes and played again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we look forward to seeing everybody on the field again next year. But Liliana, what are you doing? Because you said you're in grade 12. I'm staying another year. You nice. are. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay. So we will get to see all of you guys on the, on the field again.
Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciated your time. And Kelly, anything else to say? No, just thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your dedication to the sport and uh, shouting out all those wonderful people. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank Bye. Thanks, everyone.